Let's go. Eat your vegetables, but God forbid you eat corn, onions, or potatoes. Fruit's really good for you, but it also has a lot of sugar, which is awful for you. And don't starve yourself ever unless you call it intermittent fasting, and then for whatever reason, it's fine. <laughs> to eat or not to eat is still the question. My name is Sky Vernick, and I have been neck deep in wellness fads since I was born. I drank a lot of soy milk, my baby food was organic, and I tried my first juice cleanse at age 15. In my childhood pantry, kale chips and kombucha took the place of white bread and soda. I was super lucky as a kid to have been fed by a mom who cared so much about health food, but once I came to MSU, my grocery budget could not sustain that at all. For the sake of my budget and my comfort with eating new things, I really had to question my perceptions of health. Food customs are shaped by several factors, including culture, religion, media influence. Some of my friends in high school drank herbal tea because caffeine wasn't on the Mormon menu. I drank acai smoothies because moms on the internet told me I could go from flab to fab in under four weeks. <laughs> We've been slinging unsolicited diet advice since the invention of the printing press. The first bestseller, The Art of Living Long, was published in 1598 by a man whose daily diet consisted of a single egg yolk. In the 30s, Americans ate diet pills made with dinitrophenol, a cataract-inducing industrial chemical. I tend to roll my eyes when I think about diet fads throughout history, but the truth is that nutrition continues to be clouded with misinformation. Nutrition and weight loss is a $702 billion sector of the wellness industry that thrives on blurring the lines between fact and celebrity endorsement. When I first started using Instagram, I was obsessed with celebrity influencers. I dreamed of feeling the same happiness that these thin, white, affluent women had attained seemingly through their diets. I believed that if I followed their clean eating regimens, I would look good and feel better. I felt worse. <laughs> the premise of clean eating is well intended, right? Eat real, whole foods and ditch whatever's processed or packaged. I became obsessed with diagnosing foods as clean or dirty, good or bad, according to Instagram's health gurus. When foods become associated with something bad, like romaine lettuce and E. coli, chipotle, we tend to view them as contaminated, and this is called the contagion heuristic. This led me to avoiding and demonizing almost every food the internet convinced me wasn't clean. It came at the cost of moralizing whatever I ate. Social media platforms are pretty wary about being associated with eating disorders. Type in anorexia on Instagram, and you're met with a supportive, can we help message. But type in orthorexia, a lesser known eating disorder, and you're met with no message and over 144,000 images. Recent studies link higher Instagram use to increased symptoms of orthorexia nervosa, an eating disorder characterized by an obsession with healthy eating. It's worth noting that no other social media source induces the same effect. We paralyze ourselves with new eating rules stemming from people who don't know what they're talking about. I came to realize that the wellness Instagrammers I loved had questionable qualifications. Three of them who claimed to be food consultants or nutritional therapists all studied art history in college. These were conventionally attractive women pushing an expertly curated agenda, not registered dietitians. We buy into clean eating because advertising is a wildly successful money machine that profits off of our insecurities. If I saw those ad, or this ad, I might buy those chips after feeling pretty bad about myself. It's called compensatory consumption, and it's when we buy things to fulfill perceived self-deficit. The second reason that we buy into clean eating is because word's gotten out that diets don't work. We're over Jenny Craig and we just want to be healthy. Unfortunately, the diet industry knows what we know. Clean eating is a new iteration of the diet that has co-opted wellness culture and disguised itself as healthy eating. I want to reiterate that my purpose is not to shame anybody's diet, lifestyle, Instagram, favorites, whatever. It's just to offer a single story. 
and talk about how uh, clean eating and the language that surrounds it creates a dangerous segue into restrictive eating. <laughs> I've worked pretty closely with food in a variety of kitchens for the past 10 years, and I believe that food is really intimate. We put it inside of ourselves, and it becomes a part of ourselves. Now more than ever, in the time of expensive detox teas and mushroom powders, we owe it to ourselves to reclaim our relationship with food. Let's pay attention to the moral descriptors that are assigned to different foods. There's no such thing as something that is clean or dirty in the context of a balanced and healthy diet. We should be skeptical of products laden with emotionally manipulative language, such as detoxifying, pure, or guilt-free. Second, let's use social media as a resource rather than a guidebook. I'll be the first to admit I love looking on Instagram and Pinterest at pictures of zoodles or smoothie bowls or whatever. Um, but there's a line between finding new recipes and internalizing the harmful food beliefs of dubiously accredited health experts. Third, let's eat food, not food claims. I recently saw a woman's Instagram caption claiming that eating celery made her feel so clean that it just rid her body of anxiety. That doesn't happen. Don't eat celery as your Prozac substitute. <laughs> food is one of only many ingredients in the recipe for better health. Mental wellness, compassionate health care, and annihilating weight stigma is far more important. I refuse to let a toxic relationship with food outweigh the important relationships I have with people in my life. Thank you.